This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. It's, believe it or not, 11 20 23. And this is show number 542. We've been taking a break. I was out of town for a week, but we are back now. And lots of good things going on with the markets. A uh, huge rally has been staged. Since October 27th, now what's going to happen, Nick? Well, I think we need to do a little bit of uh, digesting here. Markets need to take a little bit of a breather. It's been a tremendous rally since the 27th of October. And if you look at, uh, say, the S&P 500, we're now you know, trading at around uh, 40, over 4,500, approaching 4,550. And back in uh, on October 27th, we were you know, right around 4,100. So... This move has been, you know, nothing short of spectacular, uh, but the markets need to take a breather. Nothing can go up in a straight line, Kerry, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this week being uh, a holiday shortened trading week with uh, Thanksgiving being on Thursday, um, the big event is really going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow we have NVIDIA earnings, and, um, right. you know, that one can move markets. It's going to move some of those AI stocks as well. So that'll be the big event this week. Outside of that, I think it could be uh, a bit quiet. Hey, what, what do they always say, Nick? Uh, stocks climb on a wall of worry. That's right. They always climb on a wall of worry. And that's why I tell traders, you know, learn these cycles. Because, um, you know, I told my membership right around July 27th um, into uh, August 3rd, I said, that's a window where these markets are probably going to retreat. And we could retreat for two to three months. And sure enough, Kerry, right on the third month, it puts you right at, at October 27th. And that's where the markets rebounded back to the upside. So again, you know, it's very, very important to understand how these short-term cycles work, how the markets dynamics work. And, um, you know, it, it still fascinates me. And I've been doing this for 30 years. Hey, and, you know, um, just watching this, watching the whole thing unfold, you know, Martin Armstrong has said for years that Dow is going to go to 65,000. And throughout the whole rallies of the past, 10, 12 years, there are all these naysayers saying every day the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash. And yet, uh, you know, it hit 40, almost 45,000. I mean, the guy has been uh, right on the long term trend for over a decade when everyone else was uh, was hemming and hawing. Yeah, he has been he has been very right. And, you know, you could just go back to 2009. Um, if you just look at uh, the catalyst for every rally, it's a short squeeze. And the bottom line is um, it's the amount of liquidity that's in the market. So if you just go back to President Obama, um, I think he printed about $8 trillion during his presidency. You go over to President Trump, another $7, 8000000000000 trillion during his presidency. Uh, Joe Biden, another, I believe we're at 7 or $6 trillion already. He still has some time to go. Yeah. Uh, during this presidency. So, you know, you're talking about, you know, 24 trillion, roughly 21 to 24 trillion dollars that has been um, put into the pumped. system, pumped, pumped into, into the it. system. This is just liquidity. So when there's liquidity in the system, the markets go higher. When the liquidity gets removed, the markets come down rather quickly, too. So, you know, again, um, give Martin all the credit in the world because he's been right. The liquidity is just continue to get poured into the system. And um, I don't really see that stopping until this whole system is um, blows up. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, it's, uh, you know, and that, that's probably the end game is blowing the thing up, but nobody wants to, you know, take the final push on the plunger and uh, blow up the, uh, the dam, you know? No, no, of course not. And that's, you know, um, you know, as, as long as the mad scientists can continue to, uh, you know, put liquidity into the system and the markets have no fear because it all comes down to confidence, right? Everybody, mm -hmm. as long as you have confidence in the system, it will remain intact. And that's yeah. been the, it, that's been the story. The, con the system still has yeah. confidence. 
And um, that's the bottom line. And the money is going to keep flowing from bonds into the stocks. It's that simple. Yeah, you're going to get money going into the stock market because it, it could at, at one point also be a safe haven. People will say, well, mm. I don't want to even have money in, in bonds because I don't believe in the government anymore, right? We're seeing yeah. how many people Safer. are losing. Yeah, you're losing confidence in the U.S. government. I mean, that's really the leader of the pack. And I mean, I don't I don't mm-hmm. really have any confidence in this government. So yeah, you know, why, should right any, <laughs> why should anybody have any confidence in this no. government? That's why you see yields going up. And, you know, again, if you take a look at where yields were in, in the early 80s, uh, the 10 year trading around 16 percent and and it fell all the way uh, to around uh, less than a half a percent. You know, we had roughly a 40 year uh, move there. And now now yields are going to go higher and the bond market, you know, will uh, continue to to sell off, in my opinion, throughout the years. And uh, we'll see equities still, you know, kind of hold up and and trade higher. So there's nothing to say that they can't continue in the bigger picture. Hey, And uh, look, the pressure is off now on uh, rates. Right. At least for the time being. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right now we've had a really good pullback in rates. And as you know, um, the 10 year treasury note yield is now back below four and a half percent. So the market seems to be rejoicing that because that could kickstart some loan activity, maybe get the housing market going again. Green shoots, you know, green shoots. Yeah, green shoots, as they say, green shoots. And the two-year Treasury note yield, which in my opinion is still the most important because that's really the inflation gauge for me. Um, right now, that is back below uh, 5%. And as long as that stays below the Fed funds rate, you know, the Fed doesn't have to raise rates. The markets will rejoice. And um, everything is, once again, good in this uh Land of make believe. <laughs> Happy days are here again. Happy days are here again. Yes. <laughs> All right. So speaking of happy days, Microsoft uh, hired Sam Altman, who is from Chat GPT, and uh, to lead its AI division. Does it matter? Or is it just all show or what? Well, I think everything's a show. I think they're all actors. But uh, yeah, it does matter because now Microsoft is going to be the clear leader leader in uh, AI, and that's taking the stock to new all-time highs right now. So it definitely is important. This stock's on fire and the trend is up and you got to respect it because Microsoft stock can go higher now. And um, they're already, you know, have a big, uh, a big footprint in, in the AI space and this will only uh, benefit them. All right. So what's doing with gold and the dollar? All right. So the dollar today, uh, when we look at the dollar index, that's pulling back and the dollar has really started to break down. Um, that's something I alerted my members to uh, a while ago when we got to early October. And then we had a nice big bearish pattern occur right around October 10th. And the dollar has been breaking lower. And I, I think it can still continue to fall. Now, with that being said, gold is pulling back a little bit today, but it's held up very, very well. You're going to have to watch the pattern in gold here um, as we go forward, maybe over the next week or two and see if it can base. If it can base, gold is telling you it wants to go uh, higher, and that's really the bottom line. So un- unless we take out certain levels in gold, first key level, I would say, would be probably 1940. Um, right now we're at 1974. So if we take out 1940 on, on uh, gold futures, then that could be problematic, and you'd go down to around 1890. That's a big support level, then 1850. So lots of layers of support for gold if it does p- continue to pull back. But um, right now, it's holding up very, very well, despite being lower today by just four tenths of one percent. Okay, all right, I'll buy that. The uh, Bitcoin, finally. Yeah, Bitcoin is still on a tear right now. I don't see any problems with Bitcoin right now. They got uh, everybody's awaiting this spot Bitcoin ETF, and uh, the chart. Um, you had a, a weekly bearish pattern that failed. Best moves come from failed moves. Bitcoin's mm-hmm. headed higher right now. There's no problem with it. It could actually go uh, go up to that forty thousand range. I would not rule that out. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, just when you thought it was uh, safe to go outside. All right. Well, that is it for today. Make sure you go over to Nick's site in the money stocks.com. See, always beating the averages for decades. Twitter feeds at ITMS at Nick Santiago 01 at Kerry Lutz. Emails welcome KL Kerry Lutz.com. Please write your comments down below on the YouTube channel, share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Nick, uh, we will catch up with you on Wednesday. Sounds good, Carrie.